on, dudes. Yes. Well, well, well. Here we are, several months later. And uh, needless to say, a lot has been going on in this life here. James from the former J Royal, now Royal Fragrance. A bit of a rebirth to the channel that I've been wanting to do for a while. I wanted to get back to the love of fragrance and the love of perfumery, talking about it, sharing it with you guys. And there's a few things that I really wanted to share with the fam in this video in several different parts. The first one being an awesome Toronto-based fragrance company that reached out to me and I wanted to give you my honest take on what I think of their stuff in a segment I like to call Four Dope, One Dud. JYCTY makes perfume oils in Toronto, Canada, and they do impressions as well as originals. When they reached out to me, I wanted to make sure that I was trying originals as well as the impressions. Because you know, there's a need for both in this industry. So I'm going to start with my thoughts on the originals first, then we'll get into the impressions. And then at the end, I might give you a little bit of a story about me and what's been going on and what the plan is for the channel in the future. So we're gonna start with some of the originals by this fragrance house. And just as a quick reminder, these are all perfume oils. These are all gonna be roll-ons, which I'm not super familiar with. I don't have a lot in my collection, but as I started using these, I can immediately see some of the benefits of going with a roll-on oil versus good old spray alcohol. So the first dope fragrance is called Ride or Die. But when you first put this on, I immediately get citrus and neroli and a little bit of woodiness. It kind of reminds me of an updated version of the Aqua de Parma Colonia line. So very masculine. And it's really cool because of the fact that it immediately has a lot of that freshness that I don't really expect in perfume oils all the time. And it really lasted quite a while on my skin for my testing. So if you're looking for a fresh masculine alternative to those Colonia type fragrances, those more classic masculine scents, this one, like all of these, is quite cheap. And by the way, there will be a coupon code down below with a 15% discount. Always look it up for you guys. Next one is Black Heart. And this is kind of a unisex gourmand fragrance with the black accents on here. It's not dark and evil and smoky. It's more of a chocolatey coffee scent. To me, it sort of smells like a refined version of Amen Ultimate in the blue bottle. Really sweet, likable. Leslie really liked this one on me in particular. Um, it's not something that I necessarily would reach for on a daily basis. A woman could absolutely pull this one off too. It's a sweet cappuccino feel that's a little more chocolatey sweet rather than coffee. So if you're looking for a total coffee fragrance, this isn't exactly it, but I'm wearing it right now. It has that familiarity from the Amen DNA that I love. And I've been using this and all of these in a pretty interesting way, which I'll talk about a little bit more later on. The third dope original fragrance is Cashmere Musk. Another fairly unisex fragrance that uses some floral, musky, cashmere qualities that give this the feeling of one of the new go-to fresh, clean laundry type of scents. I've been wearing this pretty regularly after a shower because you just feel so clean. And because there's no alcohol in it, there isn't that cheap smell that you get from some gym fragrances that you might wear. This one is just straight to the point, clean laundry type of feel. Extremely likable, not overly pushing out, but lasts a long time. This could be your daily driver easily for quite literally anyone. Nice laundry detergent feel here. Really enjoyed it. Really handy little guy here. So before I get to my fourth dope fragrance, which is probably my favorite of the whole bunch, I got a dud here. Okay. <laughs> and. There's nothing wrong with this fragrance in and of itself, but it's not my cup of tea at all. And it's not something that I would even see Leslie liking or wearing. It's called Sundays. A little play on words there. This is coming out on a Sunday too. Crazy. Um, but that doesn't redeem the fact that this is just a fresh floral fragrance that I'm not really into. It has some water lily in here. Um, I think orange blossom smells sort of Slightly citrus floral, maybe in the way that ylang ylang would smell, but it's not in this either. I feel like this is for a very specific taste. Anyone who really is obsessed with florals, maybe this would work for you. There is some woodiness when it dries down, but not enough to have an impact really. So not my cup of tea, didn't like it. Tried to wash it off, but these things last so long that you really got to scrub and I sure did. Lost a couple layers of skin there. But the most exciting of these original fragrances that kind of blew my mind and made me rethink 
all of these fragrances is the simply named Wood Fragrance Enhancer. Now this is exactly what it sounds like. This is meant to be a base layer on other woody fragrances that you might have. And the more prominent woody note I get in here is sandalwood, which is coincidentally my favorite woody note, really. And it's also not a very polarizing, harsh note that would be jarring in a cedar-based fragrance or an oud fragrance, for example. But the quality in here smells so smooth and rich, and it really tends to elevate the egoists and the bois d'argent of my collection, where I start with this as a base, and then I put something else on top, and it just transforms the whole experience for me. So much so that I started looking at the other JYCTY fragrances, and I started thinking, okay, well, Ride or Die has that kind of Colonia vibe, so why not have that as a base layer and then put Colonia Pura on top? Cashmere Musk. I mean, it's clean laundry detergent, so you can use it as a base layer for nearly anything. And again, it worked really, really well. Even if you have non-woody fragrances and maybe you wanna add that extra layer of woodiness, this is fantastic for that. It really got the ball rolling for me <laughs> and I'm not really one to layer in general. The floodgates have opened and I've been experimenting a lot more with combinations really because of this guy. So pretty cool stuff. But I'm guessing that the impressions are gonna excite a lot more people, especially the niche impressions that are way cheaper than their counterparts. So let's dive into some dope impressions. The first one is their impression of Tuscan leather. And I'm gonna add the ombre leather one as well to this because they're quite similar. Ombre leather is just a little more streamlined and straightforward. Tuscan leather, has got more of that depth to it that I tend to gravitate towards, but they're both interchangeable, really. Again, with these oils, the perfume oils, you don't have the alcohol in it, which tends to cheapen the smell of a lot of fragrances. This one goes straight to the heart of Tuscan leather, and it just is a fantastic replication of it. This also tends to last all day, and the benefit of having a roll-on is you can localize where the fragrance is rather than a spray, which can kind of go all over the place especially if you wear a lot of jackets and you don't want to spray your jacket, you just want it to be this line down here. And in fact, that's where I tend to apply is behind the ear and then sort of down the jawline and maybe a little bit of frontal neck action for the fresher fragrances. Very, very good base layer to Tuscan leather, the spray, or you can just skip the spray and just go with this. Similarly to that, we have the Tobacco Vanille Clone. Surprise, surprise, another Tom Ford private blend, which are some of the most overpriced fragrances in the designer world. Not that they're not worth the price, the quality is phenomenal, but you're only getting 50 milliliters for like a billion dollars. So on those days where you just want something quick that you can just apply, it's very compact, you don't have to worry about shattering it and losing a fortune. This is another incredible impression of Tobacco Vanille. It has the vanilla sweetness, that almost honey, sharpness to it, and the tobacco that isn't really smoky, but it has that signature Tom Ford flair to it. Very impressed with this too. When I wore it for a couple days, I kept thinking I was wearing the real thing. Like in the air, there were no red flags where I thought, hmm, that doesn't smell like Tom Ford. It did, it was really good. But probably the most impressive of the Tom Ford clones, which were all very, very good, was Oud Wood, because I think we're all on a quest to boost the performance of our oud wood, right? And there's also nothing really on the market that does a great job at replicating it, but this really blew me away because smell-wise, it's right there. It smells like oud wood for sure, but it's a perfume oil with a high concentration of fragrance in it, and it just lingers with you all day. And the fact that you can really put it on in a nice little puddle of perfume, it just emanates and it just smells so, so good all day long. All the Tom Ford ones really just killed it and they're all darker fragrances, so I expected them to be pretty good, but not this good. But before we get to my favorite dope fragrance, I have a bit of a dud. Okay, so there is one that I was really looking forward to smelling because I find some of these impression fragrances, they can never really nail a fresh designer fragrance, mainly because there's not a huge demand for it because you can just get the actual one for a similar price, and it's those fresh fragrance notes that just don't seem to emerge as they do in the original in some of these impressions. Unfortunately, that was definitely the case with their Bleu de Chanel clone, which is one of my favorite signature men's fragrances ever. It's beautiful, and honestly, whether you get the EDT, EDP, or the P, or whatever versions are out there now, it's a go-to staple of mine. This, however, 
Not only did I not really enjoy it, it just didn't really smell like Bleu de Chanel to me. And that's because I'm very familiar with the fragrance. I used to wear it all the time. And there was never a moment where I was confusing myself thinking I was wearing a Chanel. Didn't really smell like it. I get what they were doing. Maybe they wanted to improve the performance and that sort of changed the overall structure of the fragrance, but it lost its authenticity to me. However, Leslie thinks it smells really good. Whether it smells like Chanel or not, it's a nice smelling scent to her. Um, I don't really think so, to be honest, but she loved it. So if that's what you care about, if you want the ladies' reactions, you'll still probably get some with this. And again, performance is very good across the board on all of these. But, you know, maybe just get the original. That's all I'm saying. But the biggest surprise for me wasn't the Tom Ford ones. I kind of expected the Tom Ford ones to be really good because again, those dark, rich notes. But there's a fresh fragrance that they absolutely nailed and it's their impression of Bleecker Street by Bond Number no. 9, which I absolutely love as a fragrance. Green grass, blueberry, aquatic freshness, juiciness. It's just so nice to wear, kind of year round, really. But in the spring and summer, it's one of my staples. And now we have something here that is not only way more affordable and easier to find, but it's portable. It's that localized application that lingers in the air a lot more. Your sillage will be stronger. Longevity was fantastic on this one as well. I love that one of their impression choices was this fragrance because I think it's still underrated as a perfume overall. There was that hype train when it was discontinued and everyone tried to buy it, but it kind of gets forgotten about over the years, I find. And I'm glad that uh, we have a cheap alternative that I can just keep in my pocket and just top up whenever I want, no problem. So like I said, these are all really cheap, like really cheap. They're all locally made in Canada, which is also phenomenal. I love my Canadians. And you're also getting a 15% discount with my coupon code. So why not try it out? A big thank you for JYCTY for helping me out with this video and sending me these awesome fragrances and allowing me to share them with all of you because, okay, now we get to the third part of the video. <laughs> it's been a while, right? Um, it's been a while since I've posted and um, they kind of lit the fire under my butt to continue to share with you guys because I really feel there was something missing with me being gone. And to be honest, it's been really overwhelming in the good way to hear all these messages from you saying, hey, you haven't posted in a while, are you okay? Like people genuinely were concerned for me as a person, not J Royal or Royal Fragrance, but as James. So I felt like it was time to come back out of the woodwork and just explain what's been happening in my life. For the most part, it's all been positive. So I'll just throw that out there to begin with. I've been going through some interesting life changes recently where I used to be a painter, but now I'm a full-time videographer, content creator, social media maven. And that transition really took a lot of my time to establish my framework, my system, how I can juggle all these things at once and then make this my life forever. I'm proud to say that that's the case now. So for those of you who don't know, I also have another channel that I'm doing about paint, which is kind of my industry, or at least it was, before fragrance, and that's been going really, really well. And now I'm at a point where I can make content on this channel that I wanna make and that I think you'll enjoy. I feel that Royal Fragrance can actually be about fragrance now. Not YouTube, not anything else, just fragrance. Now I wanna put out content that I'm passionate about and not feel that I have to stick to the schedule or else my channel will crumble and everything's riding on it. I can breathe easy now, I'm in a good place feel really amazing <laughs> about everything. And I'm also moving too. So this backdrop, the other backdrops with the pineapple light in the background, they're not gonna be there anymore. Things are gonna completely change. So once I move to my new place, take a couple weeks to get settled in, I wanna start putting out scent of the week videos again. Maybe scent of the month, I don't know. But I wanna get back to my roots of really going in depth with certain fragrances that are in my collection, maybe some new ones from time to time, and then just give you my take on it the way that I like to. For all my royal fam watching, thank you for the support. Thank you for looking out for me. I don't yet know what the schedule will be or if there will be a schedule at all, but you can look forward to some videos coming out in the future because I miss it. I miss this, okay? If you have any more questions about what I've been up to and where I've been, just comment below and I'll answer as many as I can. But that's the end of the video, bye guys!